think my parents, uh, like many parents, uh, I would guess, uh, we think this might be a sort of an unsure future. And um, for sure these guys, like Vigo said, they were very determined, full of self-esteem, and uh, um, my parents uh, suggested maybe some uh, musical schooling to have something to fall back on, which, you know, every teenager turns totally angry when someone says like, things like that. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I think they saw it as uh, a very uh, struggling uh, path to, 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 to choose and, and uh, were a bit worried. So, uh, I've, I've always been, I wouldn't uh, use the word fan of myself, sounds a bit uh, strange in terms of him being your brother, but, but I've always been a huge admirer and a fierce defender of, of their music um, before Bridges even. Uh, what was it called? Pala Lion uh, something band. Uh, I, I supported everything. And uh, from my heart, you know, totally objective, I have to say. <laughs> so, so, yeah. No, Savoy really, truly is, uh, is a tremendous favorite of mine. I, I love their albums, and uh, it was quite strange to hear the, the, the little bits and pieces that Vigo played, hearing my brother sing again for some <laughs> long ago. That was, that was a, a strange feeling. But um, yes, I've attended a lot of, of Savoy concerts, and of course with my brilliant uh, sister-in-law, Lauren, who took that picture of me, actually, three years back. And, uh, and the Frude, who's a, who's a brilliant uh, drummer. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and people always uh, ask me uh, when Naha had their farewell tour and, and uh, ended the band, which I thought was very sad, but they say, what is Paul doing now? Well, Paul is doing what he's done all his life. He's writing music. And, and uh, like Vigo says, not one song, it always is a cluster of songs. There's so many songs. So uh, for these four years, has it been? He's, he's uh, made albums and he's just uh, thinking about how to approach the music industry now because it's so changed. I mean, you can make music and you can put it out, but you won't sell a CD. Uh, there's only streaming and you have to tour to to make something commercial out of it. So yeah. I think he's been, you know, recalculating, but forever and non-stoppingly <laughs> writing new songs. Yeah, no, um, the fact is that we have actually, as you know, we've been living on, on different continents for almost, you know, more, more than half of our lives. And, um, and now that we have you know, we have work schedules and, and a little time that we're both up and then I'm ending my work day as he gets started on his. So it's, sometimes it's hard to, to, to keep in touch uh, as much as we'd like to. But um, I, I hear a lot of his music uh, before it's released on a CD and it's always interesting to, uh, to hear the process. I, I'm not a musician, uh, I don't really know why I'm here, but <laughs> I can't answer any questions like that, but I learn quickly new melodies, so um, Paul feels like he always plays them to me and, and see what, what do you think of this one, and, and then on the next run through I can, I can always sing along, so, and, and if I can't, maybe that's not the, that's not the first thing. <laughs> They, they, they make their own decisions, definitely. So, but, you know, to discuss it and uh, maybe not how to put the, the, the album, you know, through. What, what, I, what I remember from, from Paul's notebooks is endless lists of, of in what, which uh, row ro the new songs should be uh, presented on the, on the CD. He, over and over again, he, he does that. So. Mm -hmm in between doodling and, and drawings and, and lyrics and whatever have you. Uh, but, you know, talking about what should be like first singles, I'm sure they all discuss that with their families and friends and, and ask opinions. But, uh, you know, in the driver's seat, there's always, there's always Paul uh, when it's his music and, and the how and his dad. I, 
in my in my um, work, I, I work at the uh, Norwegian Horticultural Society, Garden, Garden Society, and and uh, I'm the editor of their magazine, and and I'm head of communication, and so we also work for bumblebees, taking care of bumblebees, and bees are are threatened uh, species. So uh, this project with the bumblebee highway, like planting things for, for the pollinators to eat, to, to travel to, to, through a whole town, which can be a lot of concrete and, and a little food, was, was something that was released uh, last year. Um, it was a cooperation with, with um, Bee Association, with urban um, bee uh, caretakers. So, it was a really fun project. It got really a lot of attention all around the world. Bumblebees are everybody's darling, so it's a, this is a very <laughs> it's a nice subject to work with. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, both my parents are very into classical music, and actually, my mother who started that, and, and they've had a prescription for concerts. Uh, to, 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 my father still has, and, and I often go to concerts with him. So this has been the influence uh, for both me and Paul forever. It's always classical music on the record player, and every Sunday morning there was a radio program, which my parents listened to. So so it's it's in the back there, and uh, Paul, of course, being the musician that he is, plays. You started up with drums, and and he switched to guitar, and he's taught himself piano, and uh, so yeah, I'm sure you can. Yeah. So. I don't, I don't think I should put myself, uh, in, you know, in terms of aha, I'm sorry I haven't influenced that at all. But Paul and I, we grew up uh, and, and we were listening to, to Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin at the Doors. And uh, I'm sure we still will be doing that, And uh, f except for the fact that they already, two of them had passed. Uh, sadly, so early, and, and the Doors was uh, no longer producing records, so we had to find, we had to listen to some new music, and um, yeah, so and it's important, I think. Uh, I feel at my age, a lot of my friends do they listen to enough new music? You have to force yourself a little bit because it's really tempting to put on not just the old records, but to be on top of that or have new influences. You should really. Make an effort. So every time, every day when I drive to work, I put on Teatre, which is for the young people. I don't uh, listen so much to all the talking in between, but I listen to the music. And I like quite a lot of it. Thank you. I think uh, with Paul, he so early uh, stood out as such a, a special guy, you know, he could do so many things. I remember being really, really stressed because I do pottery, you know, from, um, as a hobby. And we did pottery classes uh, at school. And when he started doing pottery and came home with things, and one, one day I overheard my father and he was put, holding up one thing that he'd made and he said to my mother, this is really good, don't you think? And I was like, God, yes, to do that as well? <laughs> he couldn't leave me the clay. <laughs> So, but you know, I was I was as proud as everybody, and like I told you, I uh, I've always been very very fond of my brother, very protective of him of him when he was younger, and and um, I hated for all criticism, you know, to to uh, to the criticism that wasn't good. <laughs> I I disliked it strongly, and after the. the Brilliant concert at Ullevål Stadion outdoors um, back in the day, not so far back, but and and the, the the criticism in one of the big newspapers in Norway was like so so. Well, they didn't really take off. They didn't really lift the audience and and bit so and so. And I was furious because I had a prescription for that paper at home, <laughs> and I hated that so much. And I thought it was so unfair. This is a big, big uh, football stadium, so, so to fill, you know, and we're Norwegians, we're not Brazilians, you know, going crazy, we, we stand like this, and mm, mm. I remember Magna the Wolves, he, he, he tried to get the audience to dance, really back in the day, and he was like doing like this, <laughs> because everybody folded their arms across the chest. So the, the thing I did, I was so I was so upset, annoyed. So I, I wrote um, a letter, for, you know, from the reader, 
and to the newspaper where I, I said, this is unbelievable. Were, you, were we at the same concert? I can't trust this newspaper anymore if you, if you write such a shitty and, and, and untruthful uh, uh, criticism. So what I did, I, 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 I wrote, a, I thought, a brilliant piece of, 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 about this, and I ended with, I hereby, I, I throw, I don't want to have a prescription of, of your newspaper anymore. So there. And the thing was, it wasn't actually my prescription, it was my husband's. And he loves that newspaper. So we had to, you know, not have it for a couple of months and then sneak back, back in. But the, the fun thing was that the VEG, which is the, the largest newspaper in, in Norway, they picked up on that and they called me and they said, are you the sister of Paul? Do you wrote that angry piece in Luxemburg? <laughs> yes. I do. And then they, uh, they, it turned out to be a piece on and an interview another musical critic and he said, well, I don't think she has anything to blah, blah, blah. And then, and then they said, oh, you, will you be in this piece? And I said, yes, certainly I will. And then they came over to take a picture of me. <laughs> and this was well before the selfies. So if someone tries to take a picture of you from that angle and up towards your nostrils, <laughs> you don't really want to go there. But they did, of course. And then it said, the headline wrote, Grumpy Sister. <laughs> and if you think bridges look grumpy on those pictures, <laughs> you should have seen that piece. So, so I, I am uh, I am a lioness when it comes to defending, um, and uh, as I said, it's totally objective. I love the music. <laughs>
So he's been, he's been, uh, he describes it himself so passionate. Um, he's always, uh, it sounds so romantic, but Lorne said something about that. And if you live with it 24 7, the strumming of a guitar can turn into a. Uh, but um, he's always doing it. And uh, whenever he goes away and I attend to his house, and, and it's always the guitar room that has to be in a certain temperature. and. Um, so we have to go in there and check all the little guitars hanging on the wall, the right temperature. In the guitar nursery. So yeah, he's, uh, he's a musical man. Ooh, that'd be a nice question to answer. I have no idea. Uh, but... Um, you know, he has guitars here and in, in Brooklyn where he lives, and he has a few. Uh, album. Oh. You know, it's, of course, it's, uh, had this been two years ago, I, I'm sure I would have said Scandal Days. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think, yeah. This is such a complete album, and and uh, all through it, it's uh, it's uh, the songs are just uh, this sheer brilliance. And uh, but you know, yesterday I I was sitting home and, and doodling away on my iPad, and I listened to Memorial Beach. Uh, it is fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. And this morning, when, when I was uh, uh, tripping around very nervously <laughs> around my living room, and my husband was trying to do the, the, the tax report because it, is, uh, it has to be handed in, you know, by tonight. <laughs> then I played uh, um, Minor Earth, <laughs> and and wow, <laughs> little black well, heart. I haven't listened to that song. Uh, it's, it, it's so many songs. I can't believe how many songs there are. They said uh, they can have a concert each night for forever and, and change the playlist. Thank you. Thank you. That will be the end of uh, Morton, you know, but uh, you know, so it, it's, it's, but technically they could. <laughs>